Welcome to coming for Scythe County, Georgia, nestled in the foothills of the North Georgia mountains. Before Walmart and all the growth, all the change, it was such a different place and a, and a different time. And on Sunday, when you rode through town, preacher out there preaching or choir singing, they'd be on the gazebo on the square. The police department was on the square. The uh, fire department was on the square. Not far off the square was the sheriff's department. Donald Perkle was sheriff. He had six paid or salaried deputies. Back then, they had uh, what they call special deputies. They were volunteers. Coming was such a different place in time back then. It was such an innocence. But in 1972, the new year had just started. People were excited like every new year. January the 10th, the innocence was shattered. There was a call came in to the sheriff's department a little after midnight. Phone call was simply that there was a troll car out off of the side of the road, Sawmill Field on 9 South. Didn't see anybody around the car, but the door was open and something was wrong. Dispatcher, Dorsey Rogers, called to the three deputies on duty. Deputy Jim Ingram acknowledged the call, headed in that direction. Deputy C.W. Yarborough, he acknowledged. Chief Deputy Bill Cantrell, he didn't answer. There was there was no response. When Deputy Jim Ingram pulled up on the scene, he pulled up behind the uh, patrol car. When he noticed that the uh, mud grip tires kept in the trunks, they were laid on the side of the road. The door was open. He walked up there and the windshield wipers were going, but the engine wasn't running and the lights weren't on. So he reached in and turned the ignition switch off. Couldn't locate a key for the trunk lid with those mud grip tires that led on the side of the road he starts taking the back seat out when he gets it out to where he can see he saw the body chief deputy bill cantrell special deputy larry mulkey radioed for some help the city police department showed up when they got the trunk lid open both officers were found deceased from apparent gunshot wounds chief deputy bill cantrell was handcuffed with his hands behind his back special deputy larry mulkey was not handcuffed but had been shot in the back of the head chest and right wrist bill cantrell was shot in the chest and right cheek of the face. Deputy Cantrell's 38 caliber revolver was missing from his holster. Deputy Jim Ingram noticed a scrap of paper in the middle of the seat on the front seat. And he picked it up. It looked like the uh, handwriting of uh, Special Deputy Larry Malk. Deputy Ingram called on the radio. So when they put out an all points bulletin, tag number EOX 942, Clayton County. Shortly, a uh, Atlanta City Police officer spotted the tag number. Officer Julian Deal, he spotted the tag number, was on a red 1971 Mach 1 Mustang. After a high-speed chase, then the sp suspect bailed out of the moving vehicle and fled on foot, but was arrested by GBI agents later that night. Wayne Ratledge. After Sheriff Donald Perkle heard it was a red 71 Mach 1 Mustang, he recalled the uh, discussion that him and uh, Chief Deputy Bill Cantrell had had the day before. They had got a call that Cannon Gate Golf Course Clubhouse had been broken into when uh, Sheriff Donald Perkle was telling Chief Deputy Bill Cantrell about the robbery. There had been a string of robberies in, uh, in Forsyth County around the area. And Chief Deputy Bill Cantrell was uh, going home the night before, about 3 o'clock in the morning. And on his way home, he lived out past the Cannon Gate Golf Course. He had spotted a red Mustang sitting on Buford Down Road. And so he turned on his light. Car took off and he took chase. Shortly after, he got the car pulled over. And when he walked up to the driver door, he recognized the driver. It was Charles Bennett. Bennett was a Buford City Police officer. He still had on his uniform. Bill knew him. Charles Bennett had been a coming city police officer before he had left and went to work for the Buford City Police. Charles Bennett's dad, Bonnie Bennett, had been the chief deputy for the Forsyth County Sheriff's Department until he resigned. Sheriff Donald Perkle promoted Deputy Cantrell to Chief Deputy. Charles Bennett's dad, Bonnie Bennett, went to work for the Cumming Police Department. So Bill asked him, what are you doing out here? And he said, well, they, they changed my shift and I'm just used to doing nights, couldn't sleep. So I was out riding around. And Deputy Cantrell noticed that the tag uh, was a Clayton County. He didn't get the tag number, but it was a Clayton County tag. Bennett had told him his car was in the shop. He was getting some work done on it, so that was a loner. Knowing him and him being a, a fellow police officer, he uh, he let him go. As Sheriff Donald Perkle recalled this conversation with uh, his chief deputy, Bill Cantrell, he and a couple of deputies went to Charles Bennett's home and placed him under arrest. As for Scythe County Sheriff's Department, with the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, were investigating the murders of the two deputies. Witnesses saw a sheriff's patrol car headed down uh, Highway 9 South, past the Globe Station at uh, Buford Cross and Highway 20 and 9. The sheriff's car was in pursuit of a uh, 
red Mach 1 Mustang. And if we passed, if you could see it, there's uh, Deputy Bill Cantrell and Larry Mulkey Parkway uh, in, in memorial of them. Uh, the witnesses saw them back there at Buford Crossing as they come down headed nine south in pursuit of the uh, red Mach 1 Mustang. But as they started right here in uh, what was called Sawmill Field, this first curve seemed to be a deeper curve and there was nothing here just a house or two and as they pulled off on the side of the road here this is where the uh, 71 Mustang had uh, pulled over the deputies had pulled up behind it two uh, defendants in custody Ratledge and Bennett agreed on the fact that uh, that as they were pulling over as Chief Deputy Bill Cantrell stepped out of his patrol car he got out and come up to the driver's side Bennett was driving and he asked Bennett whose car is this and he pointed to uh, Ratledge on the passenger side so he asked Ratledge to uh, get out and step back there with him he wanted to speak to him and when he started back there he pulled out a, a 357 Magnum on Chief Deputy Bill Cantrell he took Deputy Cantrell's 38 and handcuffed his hands behind his back removed the uh, mud grip tires from the trunk of the vehicle and forced Chief Deputy Bill Cantrell and Special Deputy Larry Mulkey in the trunk. This is where it gets fuzzy. Uh, they agreed up to that point, but then uh, neither one will agree who's the uh, trigger man. Bennett says that Ratledge, uh, when they got in the trunk, that he heard five or six shots and he drove off in the Mustang. He went down the road and turned around and come back. Ratledge was slamming the trunk lid shut and uh, Ratledge got in the car and they drove off. Now Ratledge says that he got him back there and got him in the truck and, and, and Bennett walked back there and he was the trigger man. Irregardless how it happened, two deputies lost their lives and one man did not try and stop the other one. So in my opinion, one is as guilty as the other. When they went to trial, it came out that when Ratledge had been arrested, he was in possession of the 357 Magnum that was used in the murders of the two deputies, and he had in his possession the 38 caliber revolver belonging to Chief Deputy Bill Cantrell that had been removed from his person at the time of the murder. An escapee at the time. He had escaped from DeKalb County. At just 25 years old, he had had 15 prior convictions. He was sentenced to two life sentences. Charles Bennett, being a uh, police officer and taking an oath to uh, serve and to protect, the judge sentenced him to death. In 1973, Governor Jimmy Carter removed the death penalty. They retired old Sparky. Instead of Bennett dying in the electric chair or by capital punishment, he was paroled years later. Ratledge died in prison. Larry Lee Mulkey, 18 years old, a new graduate, and was an only child. Mulkey was engaged to Janice Willard, Funeral services were held at the First Baptist Church of Cumming, and he was buried at the Arlington Cemetery in Sandy Springs, Georgia. James William Bill Cantrell, 37, left his wife, Joanne Hanchard Cantrell, and his two sons, Alan and Bobby. His funeral was at Roanoke Baptist Church, and he was buried in the Roanoke Baptist Church Cemetery. It's been 50 years since Chief Deputy Bill Cantrell and Special Deputy Larry Mulkey lost their lives during a traffic stop investigating a string of robberies in the Cumming Forsyth County area. Cumming Forsyth County had not experienced such a tragic and heartbreaking event that shattered and changed the lives of so many up to that point. And thankfully, Cumming Forsyth County has not lost any law enforcement officers due to a criminal act of violence up to this time. Thanks, Sarge. I want to thank Jimmy and Martha McConnell in the uh, Forsyth County Historical Society. Man, these guys are awesome. Appreciate you guys. God bless y'all. And I want to thank Deputy Cantrell's widow, Joanne Hanford Cantrell. It's a sweet, sweet lady. I appreciate the pictures. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. And uh, we're putting a link in here to a video that Deputy Cantrell's son, Pastor Allen Cantrell, done. He'd be talking about the events of that night. And I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this as... Uh, as we honor the lives of uh, two of Forsyth County's finest that didn't come home that night. Watch it unfold how these two uh, deputies, through their information and, and the clues that they left, solved their own murder. And I, I thank you for uh, watching, and uh, this content is uh, interesting to you, then uh, like and subscribe and hit the uh, bell notification so that you won't miss, uh, miss any of our videos. God bless you guys.